Rivals, rivals, rivals. A really common trope in a story is when a main character has to face off against either a character or a situation that they have to surpass and overcome not only to advance more in the story, but to learn more about themselves in the process. And when it comes to Ichigo trying to, you know, become the strongest Soul Reaper in history and to save the cosmos, there are many characters that I think could fit that role of being a rival. But to find out which one was THE main rival, with me today I have THE one and only James Hansen. He has been the Bleach guy for many, many years. I mean, for about four decades now that the anime has been over, but it is coming back. And we thought there was no better time than to discuss who was Ichigo's main rival. Uh, so say what's up, homie. Yeah, uh, thanks for making me feel um, old in that regard. <laughs> uh, I've doing Bleach for many years, but yeah, it's... It's a very interesting discussion because Ichigo's had many different rivals throughout the majority of the series, would you agree? Although there are several characters that kind of fit that rival role at some points in the story and some of them kind of like mellowed out or they stepped out of the way. There are three that I thought were quite competitive and that is Grimjow, the sixth Espada, that had a lot of beef with Ichigo. I mean, he fought him like three times and beat his ass like really badly. Ironically enough, the second one would be himself, or to be more specific, like the aspects that represent his Hollow, Quincy, and uh, Shinigami sides. And of course, the third one, which some of you guys might be like, huh, uh, is Aizen, who, uh, you know, he might not have been a direct rival, but he did force Ichigo to become stronger and learn more about himself, because from my perspective, a rival doesn't necessarily have to be just a character. I feel it can be a situation or a character that brings about multiple situations that uh, help like morph the character into who they eventually have to become. And when we were discussing this before recording, you were talking about Uryu and, you know, what thoughts did you have on him? Did you think that he was, you know, going to be the rival or did you think that he kind of lost that spot later on? Uh, Uryu at the very start, um, then facing the, um, the Hollows, right, and they were trying to like do how many hollows can each of them be right even though that was instigated with Ishida and then you also have Renji right where like that was a rivalry um that was like that that happened a few times and then it went on to Grimjow did it go on from there I don't know maybe you think otherwise but um, I think those are the main three competitors uh within this sense yeah although my three are different I can certainly see why Uryu would be like you know in a spot for you when I was first reading the series, a character that I thought was going to be his Vegeta, right? Ichigo's main rival was going to be Uryu, uh, who if you guys didn't know, he's like uh, Ichigo's Quincy classmate. And going through the lore, essentially the Quincy's wanted to destroy the Hollows, while the Soul Reapers wanted to purify them because they had to maintain a balance in the cosmos, right? And because of all of that disagreement, the Quincy's were pretty much almost wiped out by the Soul Reapers. And because of that, Uryu was holding him to like a guiltiness by association by saying, oh, like you're a Soul Reaper and I'm a Quincy, like we're determined to be enemies forever, right? But then once, you know, he used like his bait to attract all those hollows and he learned that Ichigo was really chill and he wanted to save others, he thought, oh, Ichigo's actually really chill. Like there's really no reason for me to have beef with him. And although he was eventually one of the antagonists, like in the Quincy arc, uh, who later was, you know, pretty much like a double agent in a way, I felt that Uryu mellowed out and he stepped out of the rival persona pretty quickly. Yeah, it, it, it turned into like a hate rival and then went into like a friendly rivalry because it's like Uryu ever since like he got over his like edgy angst towards like Soul Reapers and Quincy's, he kind of went to more like, oh, okay, well now I can't let like Ichigo like best me, you know, I can't let him like make the gap bigger, you know, like for the pride of the Quincy, right? <laughs> like he just didn't want that dynamic to, to switch. And I think that's partly one of the reasons why he went over to you are box side so like he could close that gap in, in a sense and be useful do i think iryu and ichigo were rivals maybe friendly competition rivalry i i would say more so with with grimjow because when i read it many a times uh, it stated that ichigo went to heikomundo not really to you know go get orihime because part of the reason was to also go and fight grimjow again and to have that battle instinct that compatriot always taught to him about 
I do believe that there was a line. Grimjow says, oh, you didn't come here to save her. You came here to fight me. And Ichigo kind of didn't disagree with that. You know, he just carried on the fight. And then when Orihime said, don't get hurt anymore, um, Ichigo said, oh, yeah, like that. that's when his like reasoning clicked in and said, do you know what? Yeah, I can't get hurt anymore, Grimjow. And then ended it like right there. Like he was playing on that rivalry, that that battle. So I think that that more, would, would be more concrete because Ichigo's his, like mindset was like, yeah, I want to fight him. I want to be the better of him kind of thing. So they played on each other's part a lot more in that fight. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Grimjow, like I felt he was like the first character that was going to be truly reoccurring and it was the case because they fought like three times with Grimjow beating his ass like twice. And Grimjow really broke his spirit because it was one of the first times that Ichigo was like, damn dude I got my ass kicked right and he was all depressed in that one part of the story where Orihime and Rukia were worried about him right and everyone was like why is Ichigo acting so different? And that was one of the times when Ichigo felt truly powerless like he couldn't do anything. And I did want to expand on what you said, you know, that when they finally fought each other in Las Noches, Grimjow said, yeah, you came here to save your girl, but you also came here to kick ass, right? Like, you wanted to dominate, like, don't even hesitate, bro, like, you know we're here to kill each other. And, and, and he, even, he even went to go and show, like, compassion, like, after the battle was done, like, he didn't want to kill him because, you know, Ichigo enjoyed his fight with him, like, he enjoyed that rivalry, like, and as soon as, like, that ended, like, he showed him compassion and said, okay, you don't need to fight anymore, you know, you can stop, and then Noritori came in with his big fat Zanpakuto and just, like, slapped him. But, again, like, everyone in the community, you know, I don't think anyone can deny that they want a, you know, an Ichigo versus Grimjaw part four, is it? Yeah, part four. Like, everyone wants that, and, and hopefully we get it. Like, that'd be cool. Second release, yo. Oh, absolutely, right? Like, I'd, I'd love to see that. But, like, you can tell, like, the interactions between them both within the Quincy arc really still represent that that rivalry tension, right? Especially on Grimjow's part. And the cool thing is that even though Grimjow did hate his guts, he still had some respect for him because he was like, I'm gonna make sure that you get healed up so I can fight you at your best so that we can both fight each other at our top shape, right? And this does bring to mind, like, the whole conflict that Ichigo had with the holification, which was greatly amplified by Grimjow's battle with him. In regards to the holification process, when Ichigo fought Byakuya, he felt that it was not how he wanted to win, right? He rejected his holocide, he hated it. He thought it was like a bad omen and a power of destruction that really had nothing, like, you know, positive about it, and I guess, you know, uh, you know, just, just on a tangent here, uh, like with Aang, the Avatar, the last airbender, I felt that the hollow side for Ichigo was kind of like the fire element for Aang because he learned that it was really destructive when he hurt Katara, and kind of like how Ichigo hurt Uriyu and snapped out of control, he was like, that's not who I am, like, what is this? But then in the encounter with Grimjow and Ukiora, he had to accept that this is a part of me, this is who I am, this holification is me, like I should not be rejecting it, but I do have to keep it under control. And just really quickly, although I may not consider Ukiora to be like as big of a rival as Grimjow, I would put him in a similar pedestal because in his own way, he also pushed Ichigo to accept that he is a hollow and that he has to learn to hone in on the skills that he has from it. And really quickly, uh, I wanted to mention Renji because I felt that he was kind of a rival at first because he was one of the characters that was in Ichigo's way to save Rukia. But he was also really conflicted because on one side he was like, do I follow Byakuya's orders, right? Like, do I ensure the Soul Society's rules to execute, like, Rukia? Or do I follow my instincts, which is to save her because she's, like, my best friend and, I mean, and they eventually banged, so obviously they had feelings for each other. And because of that whole conflict that he had and his battle with Ichigo, it snapped him out of it and he was like, why am I fighting for her to die, right? And although they still irked with each other, I, I just felt like they were more so friends at that point instead of rivals, but uh, I did think it was interesting that because of that duty, Renji saw him as a rival and he might still see him as one, but Ichigo, I don't think he saw him as one. Mm -hmm. No, I agree, because it's like um, when, as you said, as soon as that Rukia dynamic thing, like, panned out and, like, they achieved the same goal, essentially. You know, e even then, like, him going over to, to Yuruichi and training under, like, 
key skaters is like hidden base where you could train all that and him getting Bankai before Ichigo like that was a big milestone for him because he didn't want like an outsider to like do what he thought was his job so there was some competitiveness there for, for absolute sure but again yeah that rivalry died I think fairly quickly and it became a companionship if anything so yeah that, that that's where I think that ends at that. Now here's a question for you would you consider Kenpachi as a rival? Like, I feel like it's one-sided, but would you consider that? Oh, dude, yeah. I mean, Kenpachi, I felt that he was one of the characters that really made Ichigo feel a lot of desperation because he got stabbed and he's like, damn, am I just gonna die here? Am I not gonna be able to save my friends? Like, this is, am I, is this GG? But I did feel that Kenpachi saw him as a rival because he was like, oh, I heard you're really strong. I heard you can test out my blade and made me and make me get serious. But then Ichigo, after their first fight, he was like, bro, get the f*** away from me. I don't want to fight you ever again. Like, that was really sketch. So, in a way, Kenpachi might have seen him as a rival. I don't think it was two-sided. But I do think that, you know, Unohana does, like, portray this even more. Because when she refers to Kenpachi's power, she says, there are, like, characters, there are people that can challenge you. And one of them was Ichigo. Uh, yeah, and Kenpachi was the the only one that taught him like the, the true meaning of instinct. I mean, yeah, you could bring Biakia into the mix of it, but you could be like, well, you know, Ichigo actually like dealt with Biakia with with ease, essentially. The only thing that, that did Ichigo dirty was the fact that, you know, his own body was breaking him because of how much power he was like exasperating. So um, I don't think Biaki is really on that level of rivalry, to be honest. But Kenpachi, it, again, as you said, you know, putting him to the brink of fear, like, I'm pretty sure Ichigo would, I, I, he, he didn't early on, but I think now, like, he would definitely go and tango with him, at, at least, yeah, I think he's scared because, like, Kenpachi doesn't know how to hold back, and Ichigo kind of does, so, I think that's why Ichigo is scared of him, but I would definitely say there's some, like, rivalry there, for sure. No, but I, I think it was, like, a really good mention of, like, Renji, because, like, and I, and I kind of want to leave this to the comments, because, like, it's very difficult because when you compare rivalries in other series, right, where you have like your Naruto's and your Sasuke's and your, your Goku's and your Vegeta's, like they train together, right? And it's kind of like the same with, you know, Ichigo and Renji, where they both went to Namayo Oetsu's like place to get Nasuchi, right? Like they both involved within each other's like, I, I guess, training processes. But would I compare that as a rivalry? I, I don't know. I struggle to believe that because I would say it fits more towards Grimjow. So... I want to leave that to the comments section because I think that's a very difficult one. And that's and that's the problem, I think. I don't know if Goku feels the same way against like Vegeta, for example. Like, is a rival like one-sided or does it have to be both sides of the coin? You know, in a way, I would say so because, uh, for example, with uh, Goku and Vegeta in Dragon Ball, Vegeta sees him as a rival and Goku kind of, you know, but Goku has that mentality that he doesn't have one rival, he can have multiple ones, right? So he is like more polygamous in that way, right? While Vegeta is more so like, oh no, I can be the only rival to you, Kakarot, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> but to really establish a rivalry, I think it has to be more so two-sided. And maybe it doesn't have to be like, oh, I really hate this guy, I really want to fight him. I felt that it could be more so of like, I have to defeat this other person to move on to the next one, right? Like both characters have that in mind. Or would you, like, just not count that as a rivalry at all? With Okiora, it was like, Ichigo's his mindset was like, I have to beat this guy. Like, he, he was a goal rather than a rival. Like, he was, because even Ichigo even said, like, uh, when he was fighting him, like, on top of, like, Kwekamundo's, like, ceiling, he was like, I knew you were more powerful than me the moment I started this fight, but, like, I have to win. Like, that that was more of, like, a necessity more than a want. Like, Ichigo wanted to fight Grimjow, where, like, he had to fight Okiura. And Okiura just didn't see anything of Ichigo. It was just like, oh, he's beneath me. If anything, like, his his uh, his dedication and perseverance is what annoyed him the most. And that's why he was so focused on Ichigo as well, so. Absolutely. And with Grimjow, he had more personal gain because he was like, yo, this Ichigo guy keeps looking at me like he's better than me, right? Even though I've beat his ass multiple times. Like, why is he still so happy? For sure. That's why Grimjow kept the uh, scar on his body and he told Orihime not to heal it because like that was like a mark. I want that of... reminder. Yeah. So that, 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 that's a nice touch from Kubo's part I think. 
in terms of Grimjack's character. Like, he doesn't fight because of Aizen, he fights because he enjoys it, right? He wants to be the king of Lost Notches, you know, like... Yeah, for sure. Grimja was basically like, I just want to beat the hell out of everyone. And this does bring to mind, like, how he basically broke Ichigo apart. Like, not only physically, but also mentally. And Ukiora did as well. But with, you know, these ass beatings that Ichigo got, he was able to abandon this fear of his hollow side and help them embrace, uh, you know, all these aspects of him. And like in the Dong guy, in order to beat Aizen, he had to accept his hollow side and let himself be stabbed. Because that would represent that he trusts his own power, he trusts himself, and he does not fear it any longer. I mean, I, I, you could take it that way. I, I would have said more of like, he, he's scared of what he can do, or he's scared of like, losing himself, right? It's like, if you take into consideration like, oh, if you fail, I'll take over. I think it was that he, he believed that he didn't feel like he'd be strong enough to to retake himself again. But but again, it's it's all due to interpretation, really. Yeah, that's another good way of putting it that he did like not want to lose himself completely. However, I feel it is really common that a character has to overcome their fears and to learn more about themselves and come to terms with who they are. But I felt that Ichigo had more turmoil than other characters because. He had to overcome himself in multiple ways, multiple times, because he has all of these aspects of him, right? First, he had to come to terms with his Shinigami side against Byakuya, then his Hollow side with uh, Shinji's training and the battles with the Espada, until he had to finally learn more about his Quincy ancestry to beat Yuha, and eventually use all of them in unison. And this is where it gets more complicated because if you want to like talk about like on the way to the journey, on the way to the end, then I would say that he was his own rival, but then once he like learned to accept them and learned that these people aren't other extensions of me, they are me. Uh, that is when he became the boss and in a way he was no longer his own rival. So like, do you feel that himself being a rival would make sense or not really? Uh, if anything, he suppressed himself, right? So it's not like he sought out to beat them in a way because he kind of just like ignored them. But I, I don't think he considered them rivals. I think he just at the end of it can just considered them friends, right? And that were like a part of him. Is struggling against yourself your rival? I don't know. That's a difficult one. And that, and that was just conquering them. And then later on, he had to be one with them. So, you know, there was, there was always that power dynamic that he just couldn't, like, grasp, right? This does follow up to, like, a really good point as well. Because, in a way, who was the one that really pushed Ichigo to learn about himself? I think that was Aizen, right? And I felt that Aizen might have had more so a one-sided rivalry with Ichigo. Maybe not directly or personally. Like, he wasn't like, oh, I have to defeat you, right? Like, you're, like, the biggest person I want to beat, right? I thought it was more so like he wanted someone to push him to make him want to better himself and to challenge his power. But uh, Aizen had more so of a personal beef with, as I said, Kisuke. But everyone had some sort of conflict with him, but he didn't see them as important, right? But with Ichigo, he was like, I did all this planning so that you could become as powerful as I needed you to be because he wanted to feel challenged. Now, was this rivalry Grimjow level? No, but I still think it was quite significant. Yeah, that, that's a, 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 it is an interesting one because villains, I mean, look at Grimjow, for example, villains can be, or enemies can eventually become rivals. So, I mean, in the Blood War, when they're all fighting, you are Bark, right? It's like, can Ichigo and Aizen be considered rivals at that point? It's, it's difficult because we don't really get much aftermath or much story afterwards. Um, so it's difficult to really tell. However, as you said, Urahara, Aizen definitely rivals through and through. Like he wanted so hard to be, you know, the best he was in terms of the scientific side of things and understanding how the world worked. Maybe it, it could be one-sided because it could be also one of those ones too, where like Aizen said to him in the Blood War, like, he was like, "Oh, I'm glad uh, I never gave you or, sh or showed you my Zanpakuto, right?" Like I, I guess there was some sort of respect there, even to the bitter end of like. You know, he could have been salty after Ichigo, like, bodied him, right? But, like, there was some respect there where he didn't show his Zonbokuto to Ichigo, even when they met. Whether that was calculative or respectful, I mean, debatable, again. But to say Aizen, you'd be justified, but for me, not convincing. I don't even think it's even one-sided. There is no side. They just want to do each other in for the betterment of 
themselves. Again, going back to Ijigo and Grimjow, it's like they both seek to each other out for battle. And that was it. Like, there was no bloodlust there. I mean, there was, obviously, but there was no, like, killing intent there. It was just like, let's have a battle and let's see who's, you know, muscles are bigger, <laughs> you know. And, and that's the difference, I think. Did Ichigo want to kill Aizen? I don't think so, and that's what makes it even more difficult, because as he was fighting him, he said his sword was lonely, and he felt sympathy for him, in a sense. So I don't think he went in with a killing intent, like he did at the very start of the Karakura Town War arc. However, when he was in Mugetsu form, I don't think the intent was there, it was just to stop him. Was there a rivalry? Potentially. Mm hmm. I can see why you would not be that convinced with Aizen. I mean, I myself, I'm like a bit in between. I can see some elements as to why I think that is. But for the general consensus, though, overall, I would say that the two biggest candidates would be himself, if we're accounting for the journey itself, right? But if we're accounting for like the end, right? Like for everything, right? Like long after Ichigo was not standing in his own way, I would say that Grimjow was the main rival for him. Because, I mean, in the Quincy arc, right, uh, Nell was like, hey, uh, we should save creation. And he's like, nah. And then she's like, wait, but Ichigo's gonna be there. And then he's like, oh, hold up, hold up. I'm rolling up right now. Like, I want to fight him, right? So, yeah, I mean, yeah, he obviously fought in a way to, you know, save everything. But he was mostly there just to try to kick Ichigo's ass. In conclusion, I feel that uh, Grimjow like helped form and push Ichigo's resolve more. Not beneficially, right? Like he wanted to kick his ass, but it did bring some positives in Ichigo's nature. It's very Vegeta-esque, isn't it? Like, oh, I'm only like defeating this enemy because like no one gets to kill Goku except for me. Yeah. It's like if anyone gets to kill you, it's going to be me. So like these guys are just in the way of me doing that. So. Yeah, that th that's I guess yeah I, I guess that's kind of Grimjaw's excuse. Yeah, very Vegeta esque, except not as questionably dumb. I didn't come here to help you, Kakarot. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think you touched up on everything. Like I was questioning like Okiora. Like it was like a panda, but I'm not convinced enough. Like I'm I'm fully like head on uh, with with Grimjaw, and I think most of the fan base want to see. Like Grimjow get a second resurrection and to Ichigo to fight again because there was a, a, and again I can't specifically remember where it was either in a light novel yeah it might have been in a light novel or a data book where it says that Grimjow and Ichigo are the same where they like every time they fight they get a lot stronger I know it kind of is with every Soul Reaper and all that sort of stuff but apparently like it was very specified about Grimjow and Ichigo so I think that's where they. Both says similarities of the same coin in a sense. I think if Ichigo was a hollow, he would be Grimjo, and if Grimjo was a sorry player, he would be Ichigo. I think. Maybe that's a bad take. I don't know, but it doesn't really matter because everyone wants to see a part four anyway. So let's let's make it happen, Kubo. Hell arc. Make it happen. Bro, let me see that second stage evolution, dude. They need to bring that in for like the the battle with Askin, dude, or whoever they make him fight. But yeah, I mean Grim Giles just an amazing character. I love him. Yeah, I would definitely say like he is literally white Ichigo as a hollow, like in front of him. Because he was the manifestation of white in a sense. So And if you wanted to talk about internal conflict and ask if White and Zongetsu were his rival, well, if you want to say that Grimjow is the manifestation of those, then I think that would match perfectly. So, shall we agree that Uryu, White, and Grimjow were, like, his rivals? Aizen, very questionable. However, I'm not going to, like, disagree with you. Because, again, like, there's definitely some clear indications there. Uryu, White, and Grimjow, definitely, is my three. More so Grimjow now. But, yeah, I think, I think Uryu's trying to, to be up there. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I can I can see why Uryu would be, like, a candidate. He did have, like, those elements of wanting to compete with Ichigo, but I do feel like there were stronger ones, as we said, like, with Grimjow and himself. But then again, some people might think that Uryu was better than Grimjow or, you know, himself as well. I mean, it is up to interpretation, like you said. Yeah, but there you go, guys. What do you think? You know, was Grimjow his biggest rival, or do you have other candidates in mind? Uh, please let us know. Uh, check out James' channel. He makes uh, a lot of, you know, amazing content, keeps up with Bleach. He's like the insider guy for that. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, check us out, uh, subscribe, and... Oh, and by the way, don't forget to check out uh, the other collab that we did on his channel, which is where we go over Ichigo's teachers and who is overall the best mentor for like the cast as well. So uh, yeah, be sure to check us out on there and we'll catch you next time.
Peace out.